Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and I'm cracking a pack. Today is pack number one of my science project of cracking the packs from my Magic the Gathering Theros Beyond Death Bundle. Check out my preview video for the explanation on how this science project will test the theory to see if I can open cards with value greater than the $30 I spent on the bundle. I've added the link to my Magic the Gathering Theros Beyond Death Bundle preview video in the description below. Before I crack the pack, I am mainly a casual, and let me stress the word casual player. So as I open the pack, my commentary will be focused from a very, very casual Magic the Gathering player viewpoint. I think it's a very unique spin on rating Magic cards. I'm going to choose the best card out of the pack. Maybe you might agree, or maybe you won't, but at least it'll be fun. So, I've got all the packs, if you remember watching my preview video, and I've numbered them 1 all the way down to 10. So that's how it'll help me keep track of each of the packs that I crack. So, today we are cracking pack number 1. What are we going to get out of it? Hopefully some sort of like mythic or a bomb rare. And it lets me really stomp down my friends in our casual uh, Magic the Gathering kitchen table tourneys, if you will. Oh, look, there is a preview for, I think it's Ikoria. So it's a set that's coming out in March or April. Uh, let's see, was this a Japanese pack or an American pack? I believe this is an American pack. So, yep, starting off with the commons. Good, it won't be backwards and I won't mess up and spoil the rare. Okay, first card we have is Funeral Rites. It's a sorcery. Um, in a mono black devotion deck, I played with this. I had life gain, oh, yeah, kind of built into the deck. I had a couple of lifelink creatures and other ways to gain life. It was, it was an okay card. I mean, drawn to, uh, losing two life. What I liked about it when I did play it was the ability to put the top two cards in my, of my library in my graveyard. That uh, really helped me with escape. Okay, next card, uh, Triumphant Surge. It's an instant, uh, destroy target creature with power four or greater. Um, when I played white, which wasn't too frequently, I played this in uh, the main deck. Uh, there's always gonna be some bomb that's out there on the table, easy to kill. Okay, next card, Unknown Shores. Eh, I don't really care for this card that much. Uh, in Theros, even kind of in the standard kitchen table casual environment, uh, there's better ways to, to fix your mana if you're going to play multicolor. Okay, next card, uh, Bright Breath Catoblebus. Uh, that's quite hard to say. In a mono black deck, this card is does work. Um, when I have played it, depending upon the amount of devotion I got on the table, it kills just about anything my opponent has. So it's a card that I that I do like at common. Next card is the lead instructor. Um, it's a good looter. Um, it's nothing that I'm really looking to play too much in casual. Uh, playing it in limited, it was okay, but I think it just got outclassed as a three drop two two. All right, next card, Arena Trickster. Um, it's one of these cards that in the blue-red deck, they're trying to push. So when you cast a spell on your opponent's turn, uh, it gives you some sort of bonus. I was never interested in playing this card. I don't have an interest in playing it. I just don't see it right now being that great of a card. Next card is Gift of Strength. Um, you know what's interesting is I thought that this would be a pretty cool combat trick but I've had little interest in playing it um, in other sets I think it was in the Guilds of Ravnica Ravnica Allegiance uh, time frame it made sense there in the current kind of moving toward mono color decks I don't see it really being played that much Stampede Rider um, three mana two three it's got trample uh, you know, if you've got a big creature, it's going to get a power and, and toughness boost. I played it in, I think, a red-green uh, draft deck. It, it 
I just could never get the power four card on the table, which is kind of weird in a red green deck. I uh, wasn't too excited about it. Uh, next card is Captivating Unicorn. This card would be great if it cost less. Uh, and I'm thinking of the dino that was in, I think, Ixlon Arrivals of Ixlon. It cost, I think, maybe two mana less. And when it attacked, it tapped a creature. Um, trying to get this going in a Constellation type deck, I just couldn't get it to be anything that made a difference. Um, Cling to Dust. This card is pretty interesting as an uncommon. I like it. I like that you can exile a, a card from a graveyard, uh, and if it's a creature card, you gain three life. If not, you draw a card, and it's got to escape. Um, when I was playing one of my friends, I fortunately pulled an Uro in draft. I played the Uro, and then I lost the Uro um, to Cling to Dust. So uh, it was a little annoying. I didn't like it. Next card is Binding of the Titans. Um, it's a saga. I really like the saga cards. I think they're cool. I think they add a, a new flavor to the game. As a, as a casual player, um, I've included quite a few saga cards in some of my decks. Uh, some of them are build around. Um, I don't think this one is as powerful as the saga, the uncommon saga that was in Dominaria that allowed your creatures to tap for mana. And then on the last saga, they gained a plus one, plus one counter and indestructible. Um, this one's good. Uh, I haven't really been able to fit it into a green-black escape deck that I'm kind of building. Um, but, but I think it does have some potential. The final in common is Warden of the Chained. Um, three mana, four, four, trample. It can't attack unless you have another creature with power four or greater. I haven't really been able to play with this card uh, yet. Um, I've had it played against me a couple of times. Um, both times I was playing a flyer based deck and so I was able to get in for a lot of damage and because it was blue white I was able to pacify or use a pacify effect on the Warden of the Chain. So I don't really have an opinion on it too much. Uh, I just haven't had a lot of experience playing it. Okay, our rare for the pack. Hope it is something awesome and exciting. It is Kiora Best the Sea God. So we're already in my science project, one of the goals I want to see, not only value, but do would I get a Mythic Rare um, in the bundle? I was really hoping to get a Mythic Rare that was either a god or one of the two titans. Um, Kiara Best the Sea God, I think from a casual standpoint, is a fun card to play. Uh, I really like taking quirky cards that may not make it into standard... Uh, like pro player or grinder tour events. I don't know if this will really make it big for like the professional players, but I like taking cards like this uh, and trying to build around them because I find them to be very interesting. Uh, and, and I think Cure Best of the Sea God has a really cool way of, because in blue, I think maybe in a blue black deck, you can stall out. And then when you play this card, you're going to win. Uh, you're just going to win. So I think it's a really cool card. Uh, I think we might have a foil. Let's check it out and see if we have a foil. Um, oh, a foil full art forest. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, the foil full arts, I think, had a little bit of value. But then with all the collector boosters, and I'm probably going to do a video on the collector boosters because I, I think that... It's ruining the value of just regular boxes. I mean, if you watch a lot of Rudy's videos, he talks about it. Uh, I, I tend to agree. I think that there's some cool ways that they can take these cards that they're putting in the collector boosters. And I think sort of borrowing from the sports world uh, uh, viewpoint, you can take those and use those as inserts or premium inserts in the packs. And then that drives up the value of your booster boxes. People want to buy the booster boxes because they can get these cards in them. Um, but anyway, I digress on that. So foil, full art force, that's pretty cool. And then we've got a full art planes and a human soldier token. So based upon the pack, um, my favorite card or the card that I'm really excited about is Cure Best of Sea God. Um, I know that that's kind of easy picking the mythic rare out of the pack to be, you know, the best card. But it's a card that I wanted to get. 
and try out in casual, and now I have the opportunity to do so. Okay, so with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Until next time when I crack pack number two from my Magic the Gathering Theorist Beyond Death bundle. Remember, this is for science.